Kia ora to love, love and warm Pacific greetings to you all. Welcome to episode 7 of the How to Make a Boomer Shooter series. In this episode, we are going to focus on trying to make some custom modifiers as well as play around with some of the lighting um, capabilities within this engine. All of these are quite simple, so hopefully it's quite easy for you to grasp the concepts that I'm about to explain. But yeah, let's jump straight into it. Eh? So let's start off with lights. Eh? When it comes to lighting, uh, let me just as an example, jump into my game right before I show you guys one thing. So if we jump into the game right now, as you can see, everything's perfectly lit. Like there's a lot of light being provided uh, within the scene on default. And the reason that is, is because there is this ambient color um, tab right here. And what this is, is pretty much the ambient light being put into the map. And since it's just pure white, essentially everything's gonna be lit um, with a white light. And so everything's quite bright. Like if I was to change this slightly to a hue of yellow and we were to jump in and test that. Now you can see it's very, it's like a small hint, but now we have a light hint of yellow in the map to make sure it'll be easier to kind of show you guys the effects of using lights i'm going to change my ambient color to something a little bit darker and something probably in the like in a grayish area only because i want it to be quite dark as though it is were in a room with no light so let me see how this looks like a real gray cool okay so now i'll map is dark now the room is really really spooky now so first what you guys wanting to do if you wanted to put lights into your map is if we go to the objects tab you will see we have all these six lights here that we can use and um variation in size just shows you how much light will be provided from this uh this light source and these will be the default white lights i believe that we use there might be a hint of yellow i'm not too sure but if we were to put it in our map just by clicking on it and i'll place the small light bulb there the medium sized light bulb here and the large light bulb right here we we'll go into our game and as you can see now we have some light being provided by those light bulbs being placed there and it's easier to see now since the ambient color or the ambient light being shunned into this room is darker so it gives the light uh, more of a presence but yeah so those are for those lights and then as you can see here we have three other lights now what are these used for well these lights can be modified in terms of brightness and color i believe or might just be color but Let's test that out, shall we? So if I was to put these three down, just to see what it does in the game. If we press new, we can see that it also provides light similar to that of our other light bulbs. But if I head to a tab here called user lights and click this, what this enables me to do now is modify the radius of the light, um, depending on either one, two or three, one, two, three. Um, the radius of the light, how much that light reaches and its radius, the color. Let's say if I should make that red, make this one green and make this one blue. And I press accept to those. Now, those were the settings um, for me to have custom lights compared to just the normal white lights that are provided on default. So if we go back into our game. Yeah, now I have a variation in lights because I used our user lights compared to just the normal lights that we have. And if I were to make the room even darker, the light should be a lot more prominent. Yeah, nice. But yeah, so that's basic lighting. Now, going into the meat and potatoes of this episode, custom modifiers. Now. What are custom modifiers? Well, essentially what they are are modifiers towards the geometry or the tiles that are already in our map in order for us to be able to make custom like um, tile blocks or like custom geometry. Um, it's pretty much making your own like building blocks, if you will. 
and um, it's very useful because with the terrain tools available um, obviously we have our default modifiers that let us go into steps make angled walls and thin walls but what if we wanted to make a lot more complex or like more complex shapes than just these well that's where custom modifiers comes in so um, if you guys can see right here next to default modifiers I have custom modifiers and if we click on that as you can see there's these two already provided for us kind of like examples but essentially it's shapes that I believe the developer probably knew a lot of people would want to use so let's say I use these and as is it there as an example so let me put a tile down let's just say I put it here and I'll put another one on the second floor since it is a double and then let me go ahead and go back to our custom modifiers and use one of these one of them's column big and column small here so I put them here I go back onto floor one and I also put them here and let's see what that looks like eh? so yeah see as you can see we have some columns now which is pretty pretty cool but yeah how would I make my own custom modifiers or like blocks well what we need to do is pretty much go to this tab here called advanced tools if we click on that you can see we have our custom modifiers configurator right here so if we click on that it should open up into a interface like this now what is all this as you can see i'm left clicking here just to rotate this box probably shouldn't have done that because now i don't know which side is which but yeah so we have kind of like a little pseudo 3d viewport here and if i click on these modifiers you can see we have geometry um, the geometry of the uh, modifier in use or like um, the modifier that is uh, provided so if i wanted to make my own modifiers what i would need to do is click on this bottom box right here at the bottom left i'll click that and now i have an unnamed tile if i click on that I can change the name so let's say I wanted to make stairs so I will say it will be named stairs and now it's named as stairs and if I wanted to add geometry into this all I'd have to do is just click this button here um, add and it'll give me one two three four five different shapes I can use in order to make these um, particular shapes I'd like to make it's funny it's making shapes out of shapes but yeah so let's say I get a rectangle I press select and now I have a rectangle in here which is pretty cool and what I want to do with this is if I click on it now I have all of these available uh, values to tweak so what do all of these values mean well XYZ Pretty much within the 3D space of this box, how I want to shift the position of where this geometry will, will lie. And then when it comes to width, height, and length, pretty much, yeah, self-explanatory, the width of it, how wide it is, um, how tall it is, and then how long it is. And since it's quite long in height, we can see that 64 is the value. And that's a pretty good indicator in showing you guys that one this is the size of a tile used within the game engine it is 64 pixels i believe um or cubits yeah but um so a block is 64 um in both width length and height um so if i wanted to make a staircase how would i go about that well let me change so since i know uh uh cube is 64 i want to make a staircase going up in fours in that 64 and a quarter of um 64 is 16 so the height i know will be 16 so that will be the, the height of one uh step in my staircase and then if i wanted to shift it just so i can put more geometry pieces down all i have to do is just click this button here and this is pretty much shifting the geometry without having to type values. It's a um, way of just clicking, clicking in order to be able to uh, maneuver them. So it's 28 there. And since I'm pushing it on the down, that means I'm pretty much moving forward. So now I know that this is the front of my um, 
custom modifier. So now let me make the length of it 64. Actually, no, I'll change that back to 16. Or oh, I can change this to 64, knowing that that's the length of it. If I was to shift this back, now I have my one step, which is awesome. And then now I need to make more steps. So if I add another rectangle and then I'll shift this in a similar manner, I'll change the length to 16, the height to 32 now, since it is two, two steps, or like it's a step higher, which is 16 plus 16, 32, and then the width to 64 once again. And then I will shift this slightly. Ooh. There we go. And then I will do the same for another rectangle. Select and we'll go height to 48. Uh, we'll go width 64 once again and length 16. Then I will maneuver this on that corner. Nice. And one last cube. Select. We will go to height 64 now because we've met the max. We'll go width uh, 64 also, and we will go length 16. Then I'll shift all the way to the back. Nice. And now, as you can see, I have my staircase, which is pretty cool. Um, one thing I would like to note is that if since it's a staircase and I am going to be ascending and descending, I want to click this button here called uh, always cap top and bottom, I should say. But yeah, um, what this will do pretty much is with some of these modifiers, um, if you don't want geometry to be rendered, it will just not render anything on both the top and bottom if it's not visible to the player. But since this will be visible to the player, I want to cap that with the same texture used when I put this modifier on a particular tile. So now we have my staircase and if I press accept, as you guys can see here, I have it right here in my custom modifiers tab. Now, one thing I should tell you guys is when you create a custom modifier, you cannot delete these. So try and reuse them as much as you can. If there's one that you're not necessarily needing anymore, you could always just rename it and remove the geometry that you don't need by clicking and cl pressing this button remove but yeah so i'll accept this and then let's test it out eh so i will get a let's say i get a these modifiers i believe can be used in, on both floors and um walls so it doesn't really matter what um where you put it but just so we can see exactly what it looks like. I'm gonna put it on a tiled wall. I'll get my custom modifier here, click stairs. I will click on it here and let's see how it looks in game. Eh? So if I click on that and then awesome, look, I have my stairs, which is cool. And they work perfectly, nice. So yeah, that's an uh, awesome way for you to be able to make kind of like your own building blocks, like almost try and think of it like Lego blocks that you're creating just to make certain pieces of geometry that you can put around your map, just so it feels a lot more natural rather than just a grid based maze. Uh, one thing, like some tips and tricks I should let you guys know is when it comes to custom modifiers, um, it doesn't play well with um, textures intended for like cube mapping. So Let's say I put my door down and I also put that custom modifier on. Instead of it putting the texture on the sides and the top, it will kind of just stretch your texture on top of, um, on every surface of that uh, texture. So as you can see my door, on the top part of it, it's the door texture and on the bottom part is the, uh, what is it called the bottom part of the texture that I made and that's kind of not an effect we want to have so I would recommend you use tiles or like um, textures that are just one um, tileable texture similar to the ones we already have just because it makes it a lot more seamless and easier to use and another thing I should let you guys know as well is when it comes to this engine when you want to make multiple floors like if I was using this texture here 
uh, are like using my stairs um, for proper use case one thing you'll find is if you put floors on different levels besides floor one um, only one side of the texture will be rendered so it'll be the bottom face which is unfortunate but I mean it's good for roofs but um, it's easier for you to be able to use walls just to make different floors so let's say I put my staircase here I'll put a piece of geometry there I'll remove this one just so it's not too confusing put this one and then I'll go to floor two put another one here I will get my custom modifier. I go to wall three. Actually, let me just fix this real quick because it might bother me later on. Let's put this tile down. Yep, and then if we go to three, and then I remove where my staircase is. We head up there so now i've got a gap here which is interesting but when i go up as you can see this side of the texture is not being rendered the um other face of or i don't know it must have one face but yeah it's not showing the other side so with that example i was saying if i put a uh default modifier of one step around here it should essentially render both sides i believe we'll just double check to make sure that yeah so now i have this working and that's a cool way of being able to just make the floors easier to understand either that or you can also make walls that have um the step on it or even a custom modifier with a particular height of what you want the floor to be but yeah that is essentially custom modifiers as well as light so yeah Hopefully this was quite straightforward. If it's confusing, please leave comments. I'll try and answer as many as I can. But yeah, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Please like and subscribe and all that YouTube stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Eh?